Jets fans, by the end of this coming weekend, we might be seeing a very different Jets roster as Winnipeg perhaps bids farewell to some of its uh, most celebrated players, some of the guys who have been here uh, really since the start of this franchise's upward trajectory. We're going to dive into each of their legacies, what they leave behind, and bid them a, a, a wonderful farewell as they move on to the next stage of their career. All coming right up on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Winnipeg fans. Happy Friday and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee an avid Winnipeg Jets fan, and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of those favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, more than anything, we just really love and appreciate that you continue to listen to us and support us. Now, tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Stay tuned to hear more about how Game Time can help you get event and concert tickets to your next big show. Now, like I said at the top of the episode, to take a, a bit of a reflective evening, I would say, you know, the Jets are kind of in a holding pattern right now as they continue to negotiate trades, and three of those players have been around with this franchise for a pretty long while. Uh, Some of them are homegrown talents. One of them came over, um, of course, from the Atlanta Thrashers. And each of them leaves a very interesting legacy uh, and and memories for us as fans. So the first player that I think is worth talking about and somebody who, uh, there's a really good article out there from Top Line Productions. You should check it out. Uh, Nick Lineham and his brother kind of walk through their own personal feelings, which you know, I would say they they describe it as as mixed feelings on Wheeler's legacy. I would say in some ways I'm kind of in the same boat, but on the whole, if you ask what my assessment of Blake's legacy as a Jet is, I would say it's pretty positive. Wheeler has been one of the mainstays of this team for many years. And when it came to guys who fought for the badge, who really bled for the team, um, and, and players who really loved the squad and, and wanted to be I would say not only on ice, but off ice leaders. Wheeler, I think, really exemplified a a great player for this team. When you think about where his career started to really uh, nosedive, it was more age-related performance and just wanting to do too much. And then there were, of course, the rumors about his locker room leadership and how he maybe didn't have the softest of touches with some of the younger players as they came up through the ranks, right? You know, there's been debates over him, Uh, perhaps leading a bit of a conflict, a generational conflict between himself and some of the older Vanguard and the younger players. But whatever it is, it appears to be mostly in the past and you can't really unring the bell. So I I would say, look, for, for all of the things that you could say that Wheeler hasn't done, I would say on the whole, he gave the Jets everything he had. And I think that last little playoff series with Vegas where Wheeler basically left it all out on the ice you could see how much he cared, how much he wanted to go out with a bang and and really end his Jets tenure with a positive memory, something that fans can really latch on to. And for me, you know what? I, you know, for all of my criticisms of Wheeler over the years, which by and large kind of boiled down to just wanting to do too much for this team, a, a funny criticism, if you can even call it that, you know, I, I think he's already given Winnipeg so much. We have a lot of great memories and it's easy to remember the time when Wheeler was one of the best players in the league. This guy, when he was fit, when he was healthy and in his prime was virtually unstoppable. Those first few years of the franchise um, and sort of like the, the big playoff runs between 2015 and 2018, you know, Wheeler was a monster and he really helped the jets gain, I would say even bigger 
uh, attention from the national media because people were like they were watching Wheeler and they're like, yeah, this guy is kind of a two way monster, an absolute beast on the wing, a great scorer, a, a true power forward that you just didn't see that often. Right. Um, and of course, then he became captain down the road. You know, obviously, there are some questions about what happened behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, I'm going to miss Blake. I think he was one of my favorite players uh, in the first years of my fandom. You knew where he was. You knew who he was. He had this ability to drive out wide and then cut towards the slot and absolutely annihilate goalies in a way that not many, you know, power forwards and, and goal scorers really can do. I mean, he had such a unique style. He was very forceful on the ice. I've seen people describe Alex Tuck as kind of a similar player. I still think Wheeler for me will always be very singular, uh, a very unique attacking uh, style and the way that he could drive past opponents and just blow by them like they weren't even there is just amazing. Um, I think it's it's made it actually all the harder to watch him kind of slow down and decline. You, you When you've seen him at his best, when you've seen the amazing player that Wheeler used to be, it's so tough to see him struggle to keep up these days and really even do simple things like uh, maintaining close puck control and all that. Thankfully, you know, it did seem to get better towards the end here, but it is a little bit sad to see him, um, you know, just getting up there in years and and no longer able to be that that leader on the ice that he really wanted to be. But, you know, whatever the case may be, I hope that he enjoys retirement, enjoys whatever his next step is. He's probably got maybe two seasons left, maybe a chance to go chase a ring. I hope that he gets the championship title. It'd be great for him. And then I think for us fans, it'd be nice to see our former captain hoist the Stanley Cup. It's a shame it's not going to be in Winnipeg, but maybe he'll go somewhere else and help them get the title. We've got a few more players that I also have some very interesting feelings about. Uh, one of them, I would say, is even more polarizing for me than than Wheeler has ever been. We'll talk about who that is in just a moment. You can probably guess by the by the names on the side. But before we go any further, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are one of the only pants out there that's got an interior liner. And of course, if you're wondering what that even feels like, it's almost like having a built-in pair of underwear. They've got plenty of great styles, including khaki shorts, long pants, and everything in between. They want to make you look fresh, they want to make you look fit, and they want to give you pants that are comfortable, stretchy, and anti-stink sweat-wicking fabric, right? They, they have all of these great features, they're comfortable, and of course, whether you need something that looks a little bit dressier or you want something that's casual as you're heading out with your friends, Bird Dog has you covered. If you're ready to place your order, go to birddogs.com slash locked on any show for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off, we promise you. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us back on this conversation of a couple of, I would say, legacy reviews for a few Jets who have been here for a while and who are likely to not be here over the next three to four days. Before we get into our next player, though, just wanted to let you know about something that's really cool coming up. After today's show, be sure to check out Locked On's 2023 NHL Mock Draft Special. The local hosts of the Locked On NHL channel have made their picks, and hosts Skill Martin and Hadi uh, Kalikechi break down every selection over a three-day mock draft event. Find the episodes on Locked On NHL on YouTube or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You'll even hear mine as well. Circling back, though, to legacy players and legacy of the Winnipeg Jets, uh, as much as we can even describe, you know, a few years of a legacy, our next player is one that I have a lot of complicated feelings on, more so than almost any other Jet I've ever watched, and that's that's Mark Shifley. Uh, when I think about Shifley, um, you know, for me, kind of like Wheeler, you know, he has two very different sides to his game, but unlike Wheeler, it feels more motivation-driven than than just age-related changes, right? Shifley has been one of those guys who was either an unstoppable first-line center or a dude who just looks like he wants to be literally anywhere else. And, you know, over the years, you get used to watching players, and you can sort of tell, some, you know, somebody's body language, some of the, I would say, visual cues, the um, non-spoken verbal cues that you sort of pick up on if you were watching Shifley and you didn't think that he was pissed, 
I feel like you were missing something because Shifley very clearly, without words, communicated that he did not like the way the Winnipeg Jets were moving. In, in fact, on top of all the rumors from you know locker room debates and arguments, you could just tell that when he was on the ice and not really back-checking, not really engaged in the play, and looking very distant during press conferences, this was a guy who was just feeling like he had somehow ended up in the wrong place. And it's strange because Shifley, when he was drafted, was heralded as this kind of a reach but, you know, Winnipeg's like, we're going to draft and develop him to be our franchise center. And for a few years, I really thought Shifley was, you know, that that 2015-16 slash 2016-2017 run um, around when the World Cup of Hockey happened. He looked like you literally could not touch him. One of the best players that I've ever seen uh, for this Jets team. And, you know, for part of this last season, we saw that old version of him where he was just an unstoppable force of creativity, of scoring, and of, of ability. I mean, for, for a guy who basically shut down for half the season, he still for, scored 40 goals this year, which just tells you how insane Shifley really can be when he's motivated, when he's committed, and when he feels like the team and him are on the same page. But we haven't really seen that a lot over the last few years, and I feel like that's why you know fan sentiments really turned against him. This, this fan base really appreciates players who fight for the badge, who love the team, and who really want to be here. And I think Shifley's you know, willingness to stick around and, and desire to be a Winnipeg Jet really took a nosedive after 2017-2018. We just didn't see him look happy for, for many seasons. And you know now it's kind of come to a point where um, he's definitely going to be traded. I would be shocked if he sticks around. I feel like the Jets are just going to have to settle at some point, whether it's now or over the, the trade deadline, you know, finding him a new home because it's clear that he does not want to be in Winnipeg anymore. Whatever, you know, buy he had at the start of the season, it's gone. He just doesn't seem uh, like he's, he really believes in it as much. I'm sure what Bones said about the team's effort probably pissed him off too. I, I just can't see Shifley having any sort of reason to stick around. And for me, it's a shame because he could have been Winnipeg's guy. He could have been that franchise talent that everyone knows the Jets for, right? He could have been the first face that comes to mind when you think of Winnipeg. Perhaps it's for the best that he didn't because I feel like Josh Morrissey has really uh, stepped into that role. And we all love Morrissey. I mean, how can you not? The dude has been, you know, through the ringer. He has had trials and tribulations and he has managed to overcome them to become one of the best attacking defenders in the league, especially this season. So, you know, where where a vacancy opened up with Shifley's kind of lack of leadership, suddenly Morrissey steps in. And I'm not going to sit here and say that Shifley is a terrible leader or something. I don't really think that that's true. In many ways, the stuff that Shifley's angry about that he feels frustrated with, I actually agree with. I don't know that I appreciate the way that he is maybe showcased it on the ice, but in terms of what he's feeling and how he's feeling, I agree with him. I think the Jets really kind of screwed up. I understand why he feels like they wasted his prime. If I'm Mark Shifley or in his shoes, I can't say that I wouldn't feel the same way. I might not, you know, look as dejected and despondent on the ice, but I can I can tell you one thing. It'd be really hard for me to give my 100% every single day that I was at work, knowing that ultimately it just didn't mean anything. And maybe that's where Shifley really felt betrayed in a way, is because he would fight for everything, he'd fight for bones, and then you look at the trade deadline, the Jets basically do nothing, and you know the front office maybe brings in a couple of middle six players, Suddenly, Mark feels like whatever promises they made were broken. That investment that the team needed to be a true competitive contender just wasn't there. And so, you know, you're left wondering what was even the point of the season. Um, and so for me, Shifley, I, I have very mixed feelings about. I will still always think of him relatively fondly, but I think I will also think even more of what he could have been for this team and how it never really panned out. But it is what it is. No use crying over spilled milk. Um, I'm sure a lot of the fan base wants Shifley gone. I think it'd be time to, to let him go and find you know happiness elsewhere because it's not happening with the Jets. Now, I've got one more player, and uh, I, I want to talk about this guy because this is one of the only players where I have no mixed feelings about. I love this guy. We all love this guy. If you dislike this player, you're just not a Jets fan. I'm sorry. There's no way that you can be because he has been a rock for this team 
for years. We'll dive into who this is uh, in just a moment. But before we go any further, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Game Time. Like I said earlier, you know, I was talking about Game Time as being a really convenient service to try and find concert and event tickets. But more than anything, Game Time understands that when you're buying tickets, it's expensive, it's inconvenient, and sometimes you find those same tickets for cheaper later. With Game Time, they can help you get wonderful flash deals that they host, and they can also help you save on last minute tickets. If you've ever bought last minute tickets, you know that this is a great way to catch sellers who are just trying to clear out inventory, who need to sell this stuff. It's the best way to save a ton of money on the list prices and avoid scalpers. Game Time makes it super fast to do everything from sports to music to comedy to even theater tickets, no matter what you're interested in. And they also give you in-venue seat views so you know what you're actually buying into because who wants to have obstructed views when you're paying, you know, 100, 200 bucks for a huge once-in-a-lifetime ticket? So forget planning in advance, forget having to try and strategize, save time and money with Game Time and download the Game Time app right now. When you create an account, be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for rejoining us on these final thoughts on today's episode of Locked On Jets. We are just talking about a few player legacies, and the last guy that I want to talk about is a player that I have zero bad feelings about. I will always love him no matter where he goes, no matter who he wins for. It's Connor Hellebuck. Uh, I don't know if there's any reason that anyone for this fan base shouldn't be rooting for him to win a championship. If there's a guy who I would say has given this franchise every last measure of himself, it's Helly. He's been an, a consistent anchor, a consistent rock, and one of the best goalies that we are likely to ever see uh, lace up for Winnipeg. And people are going to look at some of his raw numbers and say, oh, what are you even talking about? And it's like, you know what? Those raw numbers look bad, but I promise you, if you had any other goalie, they would not be touching 900 save percentage at all. Helly has been one of the few reasons that this team has made the playoffs over the last few years. He's been a Vesna winner, you know, he's been a Vesna finalist multiple times. I mean, what even is there to say about him? I mean, he's been the best goalie that we've ever had. And there is a chance that, you know, for the rest of, the, you know, Winnipeg's time as an NHL team here, he may be the best goalie this franchise ever sees. I'm hoping he's not because it would really be unfortunate if we don't see somebody who's at his level or better eventually. But it's so rare to find a goalie of his caliber who does it for so many years on a consistent basis. Henrik Lundqvist is one of the only other goalies out there uh, in recent memory that I think really epitomizes this. Um, you could also say John Gibson to a point, uh, sometimes Andre Vasilevsky, but Vasilevsky has like a lot of, I would say, volatility to his performance. With Helly, you generally knew what you were getting almost every single game. Um, and it's a shame that he wasn't going to win a cup for this Jets team because I feel like he frankly deserved better than this team gave him. He bailed out Winnipeg on so many opportunities. He was an absolute beast in net. And when you look at the underlying numbers for his career performance, he actually kind of stands alone at the top as the best goalie over the last five to six years, cumulatively speaking. Um, and certainly one of the true league MVP candidates not named Connor McDavid. I love Hellebuck. I will always have a soft spot for him. I know that there are people out there who somehow criticize him, which I just, I don't even know how that's possible. Um, you know, second or third season in, in the NHL, you could say wasn't really great for him. But after that, he's just been an absolute beast for the Jets. And I am going to really, really miss him uh, more so than most of the other players. Like I'll miss Wheeler a lot, uh, a guy who I think could certainly have his number in the rafters as a Jet. But Hellebuck for me, I'm going to miss on a personal level even more. Uh, he has just been incredible. One of the best players I've watched on this team. And I hope that wherever he goes next, he goes out and he gets his championship title because he deserves it. Let me know how you feel about Hellebuck, Shifley, and Wheeler in the comments below. What are you feeling about their legacies? Do you feel mixed on any of them? Or are you uh, pretty firmly in either you like them or you dislike them in those camps? Give me your thoughts and your feelings. 
Let me know who else you want me to talk about in terms of Jets legacies for the future. But for tonight's show, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. We will see you back here next week with even more Jets offseason coverage. So don't go anywhere. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And as always, go Jets go.